down for that long. Um, just I don't want to refresh World Twenty because it disconnected. <laughs> okay, uh, so as you, I believe we're back. Um, as you get close to the um, the door here, uh, the two of you, Killian and Yo, from behind Gilly, you can see actually the the little crest on his shoulder um, of his robe begins to glow. And then you hear uh, the headmaster's voice. Gilder Darren Gamji, can you please report to my office and bring your friends with you? Uh, okay. What kind Let's of trouble would you guys. get us in, Gilly? I don't, I don't Is this know. Because you skipped class earlier. Gilly, we already have detention. We're going to get uh, double detention. And he just kind of shrugs and then says, like, let's go, guys. Where are we going? Upper hall? Yep. Crook will uh, nod in the tram as he passes. <laughs> as he gets closer to the office, he has just this dread. Like something, something's gonna happen. He just doesn't. Okay, one sec. You guys wait in the hall. <laughs> I just need to prep something. Like a bad kid waiting outside of the. I know, right? I certainly feel time? that way. I mean, I punched Killian, but the teacher said I could. <laughs> so we just say it was the teacher's idea. I yep. don't think blaming the staff will go over too well. Is this because we started a fire on the beach? We put it out. Yeah, that was very responsible in my opinion. Uh, okay. We are ready now. Oops. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> I just left. Gilly's like... Why? I don't know why I'm having word. Okay. Uh, so you approach and Being enter the, the, the headmaster's office. Well, might as well head on in and see what this mayor's all about. See what kind of trouble Gilly's gotten us into this time. Because Kenra tried to shit on the teacher's desk. <laughs> I forgot a little bit. I would hardly say I have any inkling on what you are referring to. Well, I suppose you should take the lead, Gilly. Gilly just looks uh, shocked to see his mom and sister. <sighs> and he kind of like half waves at them. You know them, Gilly? Yeah. How? That's my mom. Uh, as you as you enter the room, Gilly, uh, the woman sort of she marches over to you rather quickly, and she sort of grabs you by the shoulders, and you can see that she has like an angry expression on her face, but she's also sort of welling up with tears, um, and she says. <laughs> Gilder, they they told me you were dead. What? I I got a letter in the mail and I th that said that you had died. Kurok is just staring dead at Killian. Hey, I just wrote down what Kenro said. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. 
Yep. Yeah. He kind of like tries to shake his mom off and he's like, I'm fine, I'm fine, don't worry. Uh, Why is she here? The headmaster. <laughs> the headmaster will look the whole group over and say, <sighs> Care to explain why I have a student's mother storm into my office, claiming that one of the students has died when they clearly haven't? I guess you didn't yeah. get your second letter. Yeah. Why'd you write that second letter? The woman says, second letter? As soon as I saw it, I rushed off. Of, of course I just immediately rushed to be here. Well, in that second letter, it said that he was not dead and we did not cut off his hand. You were, you were gonna cut off my hand? Uh, Killy, cut off your hand? What are they talking about? What's wrong with your hand? Oh, Go yeah. Um, and then he, like, um, pulls down his sleeve and shows her the hand. Uh, Ooh, she looks right? she looks shocked and half terrified. Uh, what? What's happening to your hand? The hell if I know. Oh, sorry. I don't, I don't know, Mom. I don't know. Um, <laughs> she did, like, an instinctive frown. Um, when you swore in front of her, but then she, she shakes it off because she's concerned about other things. Um, she says, uh, first your, your dad and now you, your hand is, is this? I, I don't understand what's happening. Um, your sister is kind of like clinging to the back of your mom's robe. Um, just kind of trying to ignore everybody. And then he's like, why did you bring her here? Yeah. Well... I thought that I, I was coming over anyway, and I thought that perhaps she could she could see. After all, she does. We do want her to go to the school, so I thought you know she might as well come along. And I, it's it's you, Gilder. You you we thought we you were dead, so uh, of course I would bring her along. Well, I'm breathing, and he takes a deep breath in, and then breathes out. Can't you tell? I'm fine. I'm fine. Uh, she also kind of takes a long, deep breath. Um, clearly trying to like calm herself. She's like halfway in between furious and like about to cry. Um, and she's like, <sighs> "Well, I I really don't know what to say." Uh, it's good that you're still alive, but what's happening to you? Why, why was the letter sent in the first place? We were hoping you could tell us what was going on with it. Uh, so you sent me a letter that said he died? Well, not me. So I forgot we did that. Killian. <laughs> Kendra <laughs> said it. Uh, pardon me, ma'am. Uh, no, no, ma'am. I it did not say that. I had zero uh, input into what was uh, transpired onto that there letter. It was all Kenro. I had nothing to do yeah, with it. Yeah. I just wrote it down. Um, she gives you. She gives the whole group kind of like a mom glare and says, "I, I don't. I don't care who was at fault. I, I'm just glad that you're alive." It, it was Killian. <laughs> It was Kenro. We, we may have overreacted at first. Sorry. Um. Your your mom kind of grabs your hand and is like investigating it. What? How did this happen? When did this change? So you see, it happened recently. Um. I touched a thing I guess I wasn't supposed to touch, then it was like this thing started to call me, and then I fell asleep, and then I woke up, and then, um, and then I had a nightmare. That's it. Gillian, what were you with her when this all happened? Hey, I tried to stop him. He, he's like twice my height, though. It was really difficult. What? What did you, what, you touched something and the nightmare, you have to explain more than that, Gilly. 
And then he he kind of like looks down, like he doesn't want to keep explaining things. He's like, "It's not a big deal. I'm sure it's not a big deal." Not a big deal, but your hand is is entirely different, and you don't even know why. And I'm just supposed to accept that. Uh, ma'am, he seems to be okay after the change, but if you would prefer us to remove it, I will happily cut off his hand. Yeah, that was, like, plan A. She shoots you, like, uh, mm-hmm. the most withering of mom glares. You won't be cutting off anyone's hand today. Yep, yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. Do you um, think it make it stop? I'd be okay with it. I could have, like, a fake hand. Ooh, what if I had a scout, like, a bony hand? And he, like, sword. he, like, makes a fun gesture with his hand trying to, like, break up the tension. Um, you she know, had... ma'am, in, in some cultures, a, uh, a prosthetic limb is considered uh, a status symbol. So, you know, might be might be beneficial to cut off the hand. We can make it like an instrument and give it like sharp ends. Ooh, what do you like? I I could like play it. Yeah. For your company. Yeah. Gilda, do you hear yourself? You're you're talking about cutting off your own hand now. We we don't even know what's wrong with it. I mean, we do live in a world of magic. I sure would be hard to fix the hand afterwards. I'm chill with it. It's not your hand, sir. That is a fact, ma'am. She gives you a mom glare. Uh, We will do whatever you think is best, ma'am. Um. Um, Yes. We'll do what you... Uh, and Gilly kind of loses his concentration because he's like, damn it, who? And he, like, kind of glares at people, glance glance, glares, like, oh, God, my mom's here, fuck. I don't know how to get her out. And then he goes, oh, I think it's okay, Mom. I think I'll be fine. Don't worry about it. I'm your, I'm your mother, Gilder. How am I not supposed to worry when I, I get a letter like that? And you're just telling me that this is all fine? I'm sure we'll figure it out. Uh, I suppose, but... Just promise me that you'll keep me updated, okay? Okay. He he goes over to his sister and then he like um, gives her a noogie. Uh, She tries to kind of push your hands off, but she's tiny. And then he he like um, moves her hands around because he can. (laughs) She says, Gilly, stop that. What are you doing? Oh, it's just my favorite little sister, you know. Not not favorite for very much longer if you keep that up. Oh yeah. What what are you gonna do, huh? Um, she tries to like punch you in the shoulder, but her arm is pretty tiny. And he just like kind of grabs it and then uses it to punch her back. Stop it, Gilly. Mom. Make him stop. Gilder, stop pestering your sister. It's been a long journey. She's very tired. Oh, but she's my favorite. And he hugs her. She kind of tries to struggle um, out of the hug. But um, she was a little bit worried because she thought you were dead. So she lets you do it. Yay. And he like lifts her up and then um, puts her down. Um, she just kind of stares at the floor. Uh, the mom turns back towards you, Killian, and says, y- You had a question for me? 
You should join us for dinner at the dorms. I, I don't know if that's such a good idea. I think I need to do a little more talking to the headmaster here. Um, Charlemagne kind of side-eyes everybody. And then, and then Gilly goes, oh, but we can take Thea with us. Right, Mom? Uh, I suppose, Thea, if that's what you want. And then he nods Thea's head as though she agreed without her consent. Um, she says, I, I, I guess it's better than staying here and talking. That's right, that's right. Let's go. <laughs> well, all right, I'll, I'll catch up with you two later then. A nice talk. Thanks, Mom. Um, Very nice to meet you, ma'am. <laughs> as you guys start to file out, um, Charlemagne yells from behind you all. Please, students, no more letters. Yeah, uh, Gillian. Apologies, Bye. Headmaster. I can't give you double detention, but I am very close to inventing it. <laughs> I told you guys. Guys, we're inventing so much stuff today. Um, your your mom kind of looks at you. Detention, Gilly. Detention. I don't have detention. Don't worry about it, mom. We beat the fuck out of some bully. It was cool. Gilder, you're fighting. But but no no. Mm -hmm. I'm not. And he he like just starts. Laughing and then he's like, like Ma'am, 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 you, you, you should have seen no, it. It was, it was it. crazy. And they came after us, and then, but Gilly, he stood his ground, and then Yo came in, <laughs> and uh, not, not, wait, was it Yo or Croak? It was Yo. That and then Yo came in with a right hook, and bam! It was a root snorting good time. Uh, for our listeners at home, Gilly standing his ground was uh, Gilly running away. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, your mother looks back towards the headmaster and says I I'm sure he'll fill me in on the details during our chat uh, Any... apologies ma'am I was not present at the fight uh, but I will ensure that your son stays out of trouble from uh, now on oh, oh, okay uh, your name is I am Croak ma'am uh, and what was your name I do not believe I caught it uh, Hellison, but Croak just Croak, does like Croak a is big an odd, sweeping bow. An odd name, but I suppose. Oh, Th thank you, ma'am. Please do your best to keep G Gilder out of trouble. Certainly. Croak will do like a big fat salute and head back to the group. Uh, she turns her attention. She turns her attention back towards the headmaster. Yeah, uh, Croak will whisper to Gilly. Your mom's pretty hot. <laughs> <laughs> Gilly's like, Croak. Uh, really? Yeah. How old is she? She's very old. Hmm. Gilly's got those drawing skills. Like, <laughs> in her late thirties or forties. <laughs> Okay. Oh, dear. Well, then. Croak, that's ageist. Uh, we just might not have much in common, you know, being the age gap and whatnot. And then, as he says that, Gilly, like, shoves Croak. And is like, don't talk like about my mom like that. Ugh. Does Gilly's little sister just hear all of this? I, yeah. Uh, unless you're whispering, yes. Uh, I'm saying my stuff out loud. <laughs> okay, then. Um, she she kind of shoots you guys where he looks, and she whispers to Gilly, Gilly, your friends are weird.
uh, Croak will uh, kind of elbow Gilly and whisper to him. Uh, I'd take off my armor for her, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Gilly is like, stop talking about my mom like that, please. And you called Ken Road a pervert. Sorry, I'm not being serious. I just wanted to give Gilly a bit of hassle for drawing us into problems constantly. No, man, I can tell you're simping hard. <laughs> you can roll inside if you want. <laughs> I don't even want to know, so staying far away from that. <laughs> um, okay, so are you guys heading back towards the dormitory? Yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, yeah. I'm gonna go to the bathroom really quick. Okay. okay. Three hours is hard to hold your pee for. <laughs> We've been going for three hours? Mm, uh, two hours really and like... 16 minutes. Yeah. Holy crap. I just mean, it's hard to last the whole time without going to the bathroom. Uh, Alright, I'll be right back. Alright. Okay. How do you spell your mom's name, Gilly? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> The headmaster said no more letters. It's for my notes. <laughs> yeah, no more. Okay, got it. <laughs> this is fun. Yeah, she got here quick. <laughs> I thought birds yeah. were stronger. Well, that's what happens when you have a lot of money. You get faster birds. Apparently. Mm -hmm. Probably magic and stuff. You got bad. those priority pigeons. That's pretty good. Not as cool as a giant turtle, but, you know, still. Sorry, the giant turtle was Just super cool. Yeah, I was not expecting that either. Me too, and then it squished everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody survived. It's a little team wipe level one <laughs> by a not hostile turtle. <laughs> okay, I'm back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Um, okay, so I'll just fast track you guys to the dorms if you're alright with that. Okay. Yep. okay. Yep. There's no sense in uh, making you walk all the way. I think uh, Ken Rowe got in trouble. Had to go. So on the, on the way, um, Gilly wants to ask his sister, like, why she actually came. Um, okay, just, I'm focusing on, uh, she says, um, well, mom said that, that you died. Yeah, but dad didn't come. But, well. So I, I kind of figured she was bringing you for some other reason. Well, she said that she wanted me to, to to go to this school eventually and said that she might as well have me come because, well, I might as well tour the grounds. He's like, sure, she's not trying to set you up already? Well, I mean, y you know, Mom, she's, she's always trying to do that, but... I don't think that I don't think it was this time, but but I don't know, maybe. Well, yeah, it didn't work on me, so hopefully it doesn't work on you. Oh, are we missing somebody? Oh, we. Where'd Kirk go? He's in the bathroom. Uh, I was just cleaning. My shield from earlier. I, uh. There's two. Spider Man points. Wait, what do you mean? 
He's in the bathroom. He's in the oh, bathroom. He's, he went to, oh, okay. I didn't see him leave. That's what I was yeah. wondering. I thought he disappeared. And then he's like, anyways, the food here isn't too bad. Um, she kind of looks around um, a little unimpressed with the dormitory. Gilly's like, yeah, yeah, I know. I, that's how I felt, too. You know what the worst part is, though? What? There's no serving hands here. Really? You have to do things on your own. Really? Crook, Crook rolls his eyes inside his helmet. Yeah. We're all You're surprised Lily really? hasn't died yet. You, you mean like you have to cook the meals, too? What? How do you manage? Barely. <laughs> Thea, your brother actually cooked a meal today. Really? What did you cook, Gilly? Oh, I, I um, cooked some fish. Really? Caught, caught fresh from the ocean. Yeah, Yo can catch fish. Like, like a, a fillet, or, or what sort of fish? Crusted, with its eyes still in. Cr shit, Crook Tried. didn't try to fillet him this time, so I guess we just ate him scales and all. Cr yeah. Crusted with scales, Gilly. What are you? What are you eating? I'm like an animal. Homer! And he makes like a gesture of um, inhaling food. Where's Esta anyways? Um, Thea mm -hmm. kind of wrinkles up her nose at everything that you're saying. Um, she looks uh, unimpressed. And Gilly's like, I'm not, I don't know why mom wants you to come here. I thought she was just going to marry you off. Well, I, I hey. never... I never know what her plans are with me. She she surely doesn't tell me. Oh, she told me. R really? Yeah. What? What? What are they then? You're supposed to meet some fifteen-year-old boy soon, like immediately after this. I could. I just know it. Yeah. You might she, become your new husband. Her eyes are like darting around and she looks nervous now. She's like, what What are you talking about? Oh, you know. You better not just be putting me on. Uh, what are you talking about? You know, like getting betrothed? D At least that's what mom told me. Now? Yeah, soon. What? She said, if you don't want to go to the school, you're going to end up getting married to this guy. Found him. She has, like, a panicked expression on her face. And and Gilly's, like, has a straight face as he's telling his sister all these lies. Um, she's kind of freaking out. But um, from behind you, uh, Asta and Windermere walk up the path. Um, just kind of talking to themselves. Uh, Crook will kind of <clears throat> lean over Thea's head and greet Esta and Windermere with a salute. All right, then, I'm a boy. How's it going? Doing pretty good. Uh, we did get in a bit of trouble with Gilly's bomb earlier, but other than that, classes went well. How are you faring? Yeah, I'm all right. Gilly, your mom showed up. You get in trouble. Hello? Gilly's silence speaks volumes. Oh, sorry. I had myself muted. Yeah, I thought oh. it was being as possessor again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
um, Gilly is like, this is my little sister. She's super adorable. Her name's Thea. And he kind of nudges her. Um, Esther looks over at her and goes, all right, all right, Thea, how you doing? Um, and Thea just kind of is a little unimpressed with, um, the state of Esther, her sort of disheveled hair and, um, well, sort of ratty furs that she's wearing. And Gilly goes, be polite. Um, at, at your prompting, Thea sort of like, uh, reaches her hand out to shake. Um, and Esther just kind of scratches her head. And then just sort of like touches her hand and goes, was that right? And looks at the croak. Hmm. Maybe you should try saluting. Um, she goes, eh, all right. And then she salutes Thea. Uh, Thea just looks at you and Gilly goes, "What? what's wrong with her? And Gilly goes, oh, you just, you just have to do a salute back, you know? And he does a salute. Croak nods, pleased. Uh, Thea sort of starts to do a salute, but she whispers, "What? Why are we saluting her?" It doesn't matter. He says it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> Esther just kind of shrugs her shoulders and starts to walk inside. I'm starving. Us too. It's dinner time. Uh, so Josephine is in the kitchen. She's cooking up something. So let's D100 time and see what she's making. Somebody roll me a D100. Who wants to do it? That's you guys. Croak set in plates. Yo, yo got the roll. 19. Hmm, fancy today. Um, so as everybody takes their places in the dining hall. Uh, Thea's gonna try to sit next to you, Gilly. He, he just like lets her. Um, so Josephina approaches the dining hall and uh, she's carrying a platter with her. And as she opens it up, she places it down in the middle of the table and opens it up for you. And it is. Um, it's marinated artichokes, uh, seasoned with caper and chicory, and served on a bed of wild mushroom rice. Damn. Ooh. Enjoy, everyone. That's so fancy sounding. Wait, is there no meat in this? There's no meat in this. Oh my god. The croak looks do? down very disappointed. <laughs> Esther matches it. Well, I suppose we should dig in. And for once, uh, Crook does not tuck in immediately. He just kind of pokes at the food a bit and takes small bites through his visor. Um, Esther kind of pokes at it with her finger and says, Hey, armor boy, which bit's the meat? I don't think there's any Esther. No meat? It's hardly a meal if there's no meat. I agree. I don't think I'll be saving any on a napkin this time. You guys might actually have to eat Kenro. <laughs> oh yeah, Esther. Kenro was a chicken earlier. What, what do you no. mean? Like, like, with the personality switching thing? No, I can understand how you might think that, but he was actually physically a chicken. Is, you mean like another one of them wild shapey things that he was doing? 
Uh, I can understand how you would think that as well. But no, he was transformed into a chicken by one of our professors as a class experiment. Well, that's a shame that he changed back. Could have added him to this meal. I agree. Yeah, we were planning on making dinner, weren't we? Too bad we don't know much about magic yet. Um, Esther just has a she she looks at Kenra with like a, a wistful look on her face dreaming of what it could have been <laughs> um, Thea kind of pokes at her food um, and takes some tentative bites um, but she's she's impressed with kind of how how nice it is so she starts to eat normally after a while and Gilly does too You have to go into town, as usual. Killian's enjoying it. Uh, so as you guys finish off your meal, um, satisfying for some and less satisfying for others. Gilly, during dinner time too, Gilly is going to keep playing up the she's going to get married off soon. Yeah, she keeps shooting you uncomfortable looks and um, tries to like insist to herself that you're just joking. Um, he's like, no, no, he, you might, you, you're joking, right, G Gilly? Not right now. I, I would never be joking. <sighs> but. And then he shovels a a pile of rice in his mouth <laughs> after he says that. Um, she starts to eat slower. She's clearly like lost in thought and looks very anxious. Um, so you finish off your meal um, and then sometime after as you, you chat amongst yourselves um, you hear a knock on the door hello Gilly are you in there yeah yeah I'm here mom I'm here with the uh... um, the uh, oh. weird friends ma'am we're here as well she, she sees the doors kind of unlocked. She opens it and starts to peek around. She looks in the dining hall and sees that you're all inside and says, Oh, hello. Uh, well, d did you enjoy your dinner at least? Yeah, Mom, I was telling Thea about her mar the marriage proposal that's coming up. M marriage proposal? Yeah. Come and he kind of nods his head like, Don't you remember? Don't you remember? Gilder, are you playing tricks on your sister again? Why would I do that, Mom? Uh, because you always do that, Gilder. I'm not doing anything like that. She looks at Any Thea. <laughs> Thea, don't always believe your brother, please. You know how he likes to toy around with you. Please don't let him. And he frowns. He's like, damn. Way to ruin the fun. Um, she, she looks towards you and Thea and says, uh, Gilly, can I speak with you a moment outside? Sure. Uh, Croak will just begin collecting the empty plates. Except his isn't empty. It actually has food left on it this time. Yo, we'll eat it. It's all yours. I'll trade plates with you, empty it, and then give it back to you. It's all yours, yo. Mm -hmm. Thank you. G Gilly, I haven't spoken yeah. much about this with you, but... Well... You know the the old family ritual that we do. I imagine you were quite young, so I'm I'm not sure how much you remember. But do you recall any of it? Um, not really. I don't really. I mean, I remember when we had it for Thea. 
Yes, but you don't remember your own? Um, no. He says quietly. Well, to tell you the truth, Gilder, you were born with this mark on your hand. What? When, ever since you were a baby, you've always had these markings on your hand. Now, the the claw is new, but the, the markings aren't, and, well, that, that ritual that we do where we, we pay the oracle, and she does that prediction, you, you choose out the toys, and sort of determines your, your path in life, well, uh, Gilder, you picked out some very worrying objects, and... I, I put it aside. I said, oh, well, he's he's probably just, you know, he's a child. He doesn't know what he's doing. And maybe the oracle isn't always 100% accurate. And, you know, but now with this, I'm, I'm starting to worry. Um, so Croak was in the middle of, like, walking back and forth, putting up the dishes. Would I hear this on my way through? The door is kind of ajar, but they're not speaking very loud. So you'd have to go closer to be able to hear. Okay. Well, he's not that noisy. So he he go he looks at his mom and he's like, "So you kept this from me?" Well, I didn't I didn't think it was that important. I hoped it was just, you know, nothing. The oracle was wrong and well, maybe it was just a, a birthmark on your hand, but uh, now with all this, the transformation and the the claw that you have and your your dreams that you're having, now, now I'm starting to, well, I'm starting to think maybe the Oracle wasn't just having an off day. So, do you have any idea what it is? Well, not, not exactly. Uh, I mean, uh, our family goes back quite a, a ways and, well... Uh, my side of the family, the the elven side, we. Some of the men in our family have had, well, untimely. She wouldn't, she wouldn't know. She wouldn't know that. No. All right. Um. Okay then. She says, "Well, uh, I'm not exactly sure, but uh, I do think this is worth paying attention to." He looks um, kind of stoic, and he goes, "Does this mean I'm gonna die?" I, I don't know. Um, she she doesn't. She looks like she genuinely doesn't know. But um, she says, "I'm I'm sure you'll be you'll be all right, Gilly." And he. He, like, for the first time, I guess, um, like, has some tears welling <laughs> around his eyes. And, um, he, like, tries to shy away from his mom because he doesn't want her to see him upset. Uh, just make sure that you keep me, me updated. Uh, I'm going to... Uh, I'll, I'll look into some other things and... Maybe I'll try to figure out anything else that's going on, but uh, just promise you'll keep me updated. Okay. And he uh, rubs his eyes a little bit, and he goes, "Do I look okay?" Um, she kind of gra- she grabs the side of your head a little bit uh, gently, but um, and says, "Yes, you look fine." I didn't, it doesn't look like I've had tears. No, you'll you'll be all right, Gilly. Okay. And he and then he like gives his mom a hug. Yeah, uh, she gives you a hug back. <clears throat> and then he's like, "I'll go get the uh, so you guys. I'm guessing you guys are gonna head out." Mm, yes, we really should be going. Could you tell her that um, she's gonna be betrothed soon? 
Why do you torture your sister like this? It, it is not torturing her. She needs to learn to be aware. I know, but you don't need to throw it on your face all the time. Why? Why not? It's funny. <laughs> It's less funny from my perspective. I'm the one that has to deal with it. <laughs> and he, he laughs, um, and he's like, yeah, I know, I know. I'll go tell her I was lying right now. Thank you, Gilda. But then, um, can you just, like, meet up with one of your friends that has a kid so she can be scared? <sighs> just go get your sister. Okay. Okay. And he uh, walks back in and he goes, Thea, come here! Um, she walks over towards you. And she and he goes, Mom made me apologize. I'm sorry for lying about getting you getting the throne. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> not getting the throne. She looks relieved, uh, a little bit annoyed, and just kind of mutters, I, I knew you were lying about that. I wasn't lying. It'll happen, just not today. <laughs> she looks slightly annoyed and slightly relieved simultaneously. Is mom waiting outside then? Yeah, she is. I'll, I'll um, see you out. And then I guess he gives them both a hug before they head out. Uh, so they, they return the hugs and uh, your mom says, uh, please take care of yourself. And he goes, yeah, I, I promise I will write you if anything happens. And hopefully I won't be dying. Ho and hopefully. He, and then he laughs. Um, she has a small smile and she says, yes, ho hopefully. And then he goes, bye guys. And he turns and he heads back inside. Uh, they say their goodbyes as well. And as soon as he comes in, he's like, Okay, guys, the next time she comes, um, if one of you guys can act like the potential betrothed, so I can get my sister pretty good the next time. Not it. What? Isn't your sister 15? Hey, it's never too early to be married off. Kendra is the height of a 15 year old. <laughs> well, that might work. Yeah, definitely not it. <laughs> I think it should be Kendra. It could get you closer to my mom. Ooh. Gilly, that was just a joke. I wasn't being serious. Yes, you were. Right. And then he goes, I heard, I heard yo. Sounds like you were being serious. <clears throat> That's what you get for putting that kind of imagery in my brain. Yeah, croak. Yeah, croaky. I don't know what you're talking about. <clears throat> Alright, uh, so everybody's finished their meals now. Um, Josephina has collected the dishes and cleaned up. Uh, so it's it's basically curfew time now, so... And Gilly's like, thank the lord they did not go into my room. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll have meat next meal, Esther. Yeah, hopefully. I still say you eat, Kenro. I'm gonna paint a picture of Ken Road as a chicken. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> I was just about to call Windermere. <laughs> oh, what do you want? <laughs> I was just telling her it was time for bed because she seemed a little lost in thought. Down oh, okay. I was, I was doing everybody else. Yeah, getting lost in thought is kind of a Windermere thing. She'd do that. Yeah, I figure, I figure that's why she might be saying that. Yeah, she just blanked on all that. She didn't pay attention to anything that happened. <laughs> oh, were there other people here? <laughs> Basically. Right. <laughs> um, okay, so going to bed then, everybody? Yep. Nobody has anything they want to do? Mm, Crook already prayed to Hana for today, so no, his nightly ritual is good. I'm pretty happy with my chicken picture. All right. Um, so, uh, everybody gets a nice rest, and we wake up the next day. Oh, I should have drawn a picture of the giant turtle <laughs> tomorrow uh, night. It's not too late, yeah. Um, so, the sun is shining, and the birds are chirping, and it is a new day. Trope does his morning bathroom ritual, makes sure the door is locked, removes his armor, cleans himself, and then puts his armor back on. Yeah. Gilly wakes up early and... Wait, wait, Crow, go back to the bathroom. And then, um, he, like, walks half the sleep to the bathroom and starts banging on the door. <laughs> ah. Occupied. What? What? It's so early. Yeah, you know, early bird gets the toilet at all. Gets the toilet. Yeah, you could just go uh, get something to eat. I'll I'll be out in a moment. Okay. And then he goes back to his room and goes back to sleep. Kalian has rolled a nat one for this morning's bagpipe playing. Oh God, oh, Lord! <laughs> All right, um, another uh, unholy din is uh, gonna wake the rest of the group up. The <gasps> monster. What's that? So, so wait, what do we think that is now? Do we know it's the bagpipes, or do we think it's Kinroat snoring, or do we still think it's a monster? Um, you definitely don't think it's a monster. You have seen her walking around with bagpipes. And she did blame it on Kenrote, so whether or not you're convinced that it's Kenrote or not is up to your character's own intelligence, I guess. I know she played her bagpipes at the Airy. With, yeah, um, you guys know that she owns bagpipes, but um, she did successfully blame it on Kenrote last time. Yeah, I don't, I don't think Croak and Yo were uh, there by her whenever she played at the Airy. We were inside like the building so we could hear but we didn't we didn't know and ken wrote was also there at the time so i'm going with ken wrote snoring Brooke will bang just kind of door. yeah bang on his door with you keep it down will you god ken wrote trying to sleep Killian hears the banging and stops playing and comes out of her room to go see what's all the noise about Kenro snoring again. Oh my Damn god, Kenro. Guy never stops. I. It's so probably that beard. Hair. It blocks his, like, nasal passage. Airflow, yeah. Yeah. He just needs to roll on his side. Hmm. Or shave his beard. You're really obsessed with that, huh? One day I'll convince him to. Glad I don't have a beard. For you to shave. <laughs> Yeah, it'd be gone by now. <laughs> um, so it is now a Thursday, and you have um, first uh, Herbology, and then, um, let me double check. Yeah, so first you have Herbology in the morning. Uh, if we're going a uh, warm breakfast, Croak will just grab some dried jerky to go. Yeah, you'll grab something. 
keep on moving trucking give a quick good morning to Josephine she gives you a quick good morning back <laughs> um, so kind of shouts down the hall since I know you all are going to ask we have herbology first in the greenhouse the in the greenhouse master has spoken. schedule master you don't have to call me that yay schedule master yes heard this walk shaking his head schedule master <clears throat> I can fast check you at the greenhouse if you like. Cool. Yeah. yeah. The same way I want to do something. It's Gilly's favorite class. Uh, critical salute on his way in. Yeah here so he could be a tree again mm -hmm. or an animal greetings professor odysseus uh she's kind of she's bent over looking at um some some planters right now but she she turns around as you as you uh address her and uh says oh good morning are you ready for class critical nod that's good There we go. Okay. Um, so she begins to kind of get to work on um, gathering a bunch of supplies for you as you all pile into class. Um, and actually, Tenwinden is here and she's actually helping her. Uh, so as you all kind of gather your places, says, yes, yes, just pick a planter and stand in front of it. I'll be with you in just a moment. And then, um, satisfied that she's gathered everything she needs, she turns around and says, all right, uh, today marks, well, the first class of herbology and, well, ingredients and Er, different plants and herbs, flowers, all sorts of things, roots and and um, and seeds. They're they're often used as ingredients in potions and in as components in spells. So we at the college feel that it's also necessary that you understand how those ingredients are grown, so that you can potentially perhaps grow them yourselves. As any good wizard or spellcaster knows that the easiest way to procure an ingredient is if it's growing uh, downstairs in your basement. Saves you lots of time and lots of hassle when you have to trek far and wide like Professor Laguna um, to find various ingredients. Um, I always say, why, uh, why go on the trek when you can just start a greenhouse? So... Today we will be uh, discussing a plant called the Cave Star. Um, she she holds out sort of like a box that she has that is completely sealed, so you can't actually see what's inside it. Now, Cave Star are typically grown in caves, uh, as the name would suggest, but... We don't exactly have any caves handy around here, and we still want to grow them, so we're going to today try to mimic the environment of a cave. Um, and cave stars are very useful. They're, they're a small yellow uh, lichen that grows on the wall, and they're actually bioluminescent, so they, they glow on their own. And um, 
what we like to do is we'll take a cave star and we'll we'll grow it to to its full maturity and then we'll place it inside a small little metal container uh, with an opening and it turns into what we've been calling a lantern star and essentially it's a lantern that can't go out which is as you can imagine incredibly handy to have but when the cave star is rather early in its growth period there well she hums and haws for a second trying to pick the best word uh, rather unstable if you will and it can be a tad delicate so I'm going to show you the process of repotting a cave star into its proper environment and we'll see if you can manage to mimic it. And I don't want you to worry though, you won't be harmed, it'll just be, well, rather bright. Gilly puts his hand up. Yes? Can you eat it? I don't think you should, I haven't seen anyone eat it. But um, the properties of a cave star might make you glow. Any... But it also might kill you. So, a uh, bit of a toss up there. I would suggest you don't try it. Any more questions? Okay. Crook shakes his head. He's just taking down notes, listening. Now, uh, Tenny here has the, the crate. Um, Tenwinden goes, uh, Professor, uh, Tenwinden. Um, yes, yes, I'm sorry. Tenwinden here will uh, bring each of you your cave star, and each of you has in front of you a, a crate that is designed to mimic the conditions of a cave. Now, very delicately, you need to lift the bottom of the crate and quickly place your cave star inside uh, without it dropping on the ground, without it touching the edges of your crate, and you need to firmly attach it to the inside of the, the crate as if it was a cave wall. Does that make sense? Crook nods. Yes. All right, then. Yes, ma'am. Tenwinden will be around shortly with each of your cave stars. Um, so she hands you kind of like small little boxes that are completely sealed. Here you go. Here you go. Uh, she you. hands them all out. And uh, Professor Hibiske has her own version of it at the front. Um, and she says, now, watch me before you attempt it yourself, please. You just need to, and she she quickly grabs the uh, uh, small yellow lichen, and, and in a flash she has it quickly stuffed under her crate, and attached to the to the side of the the inside of the crate rather. Um, you barely even get a chance to see what the um, what the actual cave star looks like by the time she's already done it. Um, she says, "Now it's a nice quick motion." But it's also very smooth. If you're too rough with the cave star, you could, you could burst it. So do your best to do, just like I did. Remember, it's just a nice quick swish, and very smooth. Uh, so if you're going to attempt it, um, make a sleight of hand roll. Kirk's sweating a bit inside his armor, but he's going to attempt to replicate the motion. All right, go for it. Side hand will. Twelve. All right. Um, you're not nearly as uh, deft as she is, but you do manage to get your cave star in there without uh, upsetting any sort of chemical balance inside of it. I got a thirteen. Um, so Gilly, you do uh, very similar to Croak, and uh, the cave star itself feels um, rather soft. It's kind of like moss. Um, just just, uh, it's basically yeah, yeah. It's a small little like um, small little ball of yellow moss, basically. 
that attaches itself once you place it on the inside of the crate. So yo, make your sleight of hand roll. Seven. All right. Uh, Killian, do yours as well, just while we're doing it. Eleven. All right. So Killian and yo. Um, Killian, you almost managed to succeed. Um, but at the last second, um, the side of your cave star touches the edge of the crate and just kind of carves off a chunk. Oh. Um, and then in a flash of brilliant light, um, you it uh, basically goes off like a flashbang in your face. Um, oh. <laughs> and you are blinded. Um. um you basically just see bright lights in your eyes um, as you sort of the side of the crate just kind of shields everybody else from it but um, it does get a good blast right in your face um, so you are seeing stars right now guys I think I'm having a religious awakening right now uh, yo um, you are significantly less graceful even than Killian and you just drop yours on the ground um, <laughs> no yours hits the ground and bursts and <laughs> Oh, sorry. Yes. Um, your yours hits the ground and bursts, and it, it blinds you as well. Uh, Croak, you luckily have a helmet to shield the side of your face, and it does not blind you. Dang it! Goodness, yo, be more careful. My eyes. I can't see. I start reaching around, trying to grab onto Croak. Kirk will just kind of offer his arm out, just kind of shaking his head at you. Um, <laughs> Professor Biscay will look over at you too as she she catches out of the corner of her eye some some bright flashes that it's kind of like a, a camera flash going off. Um, she catches some some bright flashes out of the corner of her eye and she goes, oh. Oh, oh dear. It seems like you've you set off your cave star. Now tell me, can you see this? Uh, she the rest of you see her make some motions in front of Killian's face. Uh do I? No. No. I don't. Am I blind? Uh, in on my head, yes. Can't see anything. I can't see that gesture, Gillian. G Gilly. <laughs> <laughs> she's blind and she's talking to herself. What did that cave star do? Um, so she's, Professor Biscay says, oh, oh dear. Um, your vision should return to you. Uh, it, it'll probably last a little bit, but it will return. It, it won't be permanent, so don't you worry. I'll take your word for it. Just uh, perhaps have one of your friends help you to your next class. Uh, okay. Croak, give me a piggyback ride. Uh, certainly not, yo. You're quite heavy, but you can grab onto my cloak and I will lead you. I guess that'll do. I'm never going to get a piggyback ride. Um, Professor Biscay kind of does the same little thing with you where she tests to see how well you can see you. Not um, at all. Yeah, you, you're also blinded. So, um... Oh. <laughs> she says, uh, well, th the same thing to you, yo. It's not permanent. It, it will wear off. So, uh, just walk a little slower and don't don't bump into anything. Uh, oh, I'm afraid. I'm afraid there's there's no really there's no real way to make it go faster. But your vision should return to you shortly. Um, Killian, from beside you, you hear Ten Minden's voice, and she says, "Oh, don't worry. It happens to everybody. I flashed myself on the first on my first day as well." How long did the blindness last? Mm, like an hour, maybe. I, I don't know. Sola helped me get around to class, but it, I think maybe about an hour. Okay. You'll you'll be all right. Your vision comes back. I trust you. I wouldn't steer you wrong. 
and she just kind of skips away happily. Um, so the rest of the class, she explains exactly why um, the chemicals react the way they do, how uh, how bioluminescent plants work, um, as well as she shows you um, a finished lantern star, uh, which is like a small little uh, metal box with one side, uh, three of the sides rather are glass, um, and it it shines out. Um, it has a small metal handle on top of it, and it, it basically shines like a lantern. Um, and inside you can see um, a mature uh, cave star that is turned sort of like a, a... It's not yellow anymore, it's more of an orange. Um, and then, content with her fat class being finished, she says, All right, uh, Careful getting to your next class, but um, that's all I have for today. Um, uh, Gilly, if you wouldn't mind helping your friend here. Killian, like, he, like stumbles, walks. like, over to him. And he kind of, like, um, puts his hand out so she can reach for it. Killian's arms are just kind of flailing and whacking him in the face. Mm -hmm. Is she tall enough to whack him in the face? Mm, she is pretty short. I'd say yeah. you could maybe if you went on your tiptoes reach like his collarbone. Gilly, is that you? She, her, yeah, like, yeah. Up and, his he, face and, grab him. and he makes a oosh sound. Oh, that's my cat. Um, after he gets hit in the gut from her flailing. Alright. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> okay okay good I, I'm just gonna use you for balance uh, use you to know where I'm going you'll be my eyes alright I can do that alright schedule master where are we going mm -hmm. <sighs> um, um, so you are going uh, to enchant you have ten more minutes. Sit. Uh, our next class is enchantment. Correct. Uh, Crocal, sweet professor. And say, thank you for the lesson today, ma'am. Enchantment is uh, upstairs, back in those classrooms that you were in before. Ten four. Yo is gonna face the opposite way from the teacher and thank her for the class. <laughs> Just... Kirk will just rotate him. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Careful. Here you go. Grab onto my cloak. And uh, Kirk will offer his cloak. Uh, he'll put it in Yo's hands. <laughs> thank you. I grab it. Come here, Locke. All right, I'll bring you right to the classroom if you're all right with that. Yep. I'm blind. Is there a cat somewhere nearby? <laughs> oh, yeah, it's mine. I'm kidding. I think it's just Kenro making weird noises again. Oh, that makes sense. Oh, maybe he turned, turned, into, turned into, into a cat. cat. Oh, Kenro. Always doing the wackiest stuff. So your class is this one today. I feel like we're walking down the aisle, Paul. <laughs> Kirk will just kind of uh, grab Yo's shoulders and situate him into the seat. And Gilly will uh, lead Killy to the front row. Actually, he's going to lead her to sit next to Kenrot. Kenrot. And then put her in the seat right there. And then they'll sit in the front row. Oh, man. How funny it would be to lead her into an empty classroom and then leave. <laughs> oh, yeah. Or the wrong classroom. Oh. <laughs> 
the the professor just kind of looks at you guys as you tentatively walk into the classroom um leading each other uh awkwardly and she says is everything all right i'm i'm i've, I've been crippled i'm blind they took our sight take stars <laughs> ma'am they they took your sight who took your sight Oh man, I can't even think of her name now. Just Those like, devil flowers. Yes, Odysseus. Cave stars were the plants. Ah, oh, you've come from Herbology then. Yeah, the plant lady. Mm, she starts you on cave stars, doesn't she? Yes, ma'am. Mm, you'll get the hang of it. Most spellcasters around these parts know how to, you know, fix themselves up a lantern star pretty quickly, so... You'll get you. You'll get used to it. Don't you worry. Now, I believe we've run into. So, I've run into some of you. Um, she looks at. Uh, um, but uh, there are a few unfamiliar faces here. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, my name is. Uh, Professor Nymeria Northumber, and I teach enchantments at the college. And, well, enchantments are complicated, to say it nicely. They, they can be very easily abused. So, I would advise you to practice extreme discretion with what you are taught in this class. Crockle nod. Now, can anyone name any enchantments that they've seen performed or performed themselves or had performed on them? Anyone? Uh, Kirk shakes his head no. Kenra became a tree. Hmm. That's not, that's not quite what I was referring to, but um, I'll tell you what, would anyone like to try? Crook tentatively raises his hand. Mm, very good, very brave. Now come up to the front of the class. All right, now. Uh, Croak, is it? Yes, ma'am. Now, Croak, I'm going to perform an enchantment on you. Are you all right with that? I suppose, ma'am. Mm, good, good. Uh, she begins to take some ingredients out of her, uh, her small pouch that she has on her. Um, Croak, you can see in her hand she has what looks like a snake's tongue. Um, and then a small piece of honeycomb. Now then, just hold still, Croak. And she uh, makes a small motion. And then make a wisdom saving throw for me. Oh god, I'm terrible at these. I got a six. Uh, that's insufficient. All right. Um, so you feel yourself kind of like straighten up into perfect posture. Um, I imagine Croak had pretty good posture already, but um, you straighten up kind of to attention. Um, and she says, now I've just cast an enchantment called Suggestion on our friend here. Uh, would anyone like to suggest that he do anything? Take your helmet like, off. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> hmm, now, I don't know if he would be okay with that. Oh, can, can I move well. during this time, or am I just like stuck uh, solid? Yeah, you're actually fine. She's just going to tell you to do something, but she, you're perfectly allowed to talk right now. Croak is just vigorously shaking his head no. Mm, he please, please don't make me do that. Please. He doesn't, he doesn't seem comfortable with that. So, how oh. about something else? Um... 
Gilly wants to see him dance. Oh, I was dance. just about to say that. Mm, that's a fun one. Uh, I can't even see him. See your moves, Mr. Crook. Crook will just do this kind of awkward, like, squatting, like, standing, you know, just little jig. Uh, she has, she hasn't, she hasn't commanded you yet, but... Oh, he um, was doing that on his own free will. <laughs> um, she, it, without your protesting, she will say, all right, then, that's a fairly straightforward one. Croak, dance. And you are compelled to do it. Uh, Croak does about the same dance before, but it's it's a little bit more awkward this time. Like, he's his body's forced to do it. Very good. Now you see how that works? Croak will nod. Now, I want to demonstrate another aspect of this spell. Um, so, Croak, take out your sword and slit your throat. Uh, oh. Uh, and you do not feel compelled to do that at all. God. In fact, you feel sort of that buzz in the back of your head um, and the sort of echo that her voice had. Um, fade actually when she says that now croak do you feel compelled to do that no ma'am thankfully very good blood would be very hard to clean off this floor now as you can see class the spell suggestion which i used on our friend croak here can be used to well sort of compel people to take actions but those actions are limited to things that are well within their possibility and you cannot compel someone to harm themselves that will in fact break them out of the enchantment entirely very good croak you can take a seat thank you ma'am and he'll salute before departing back to his seat good job croak yes a round of applause for our volunteer very good dancing. I didn't see it, but good job. I'm assuming I'm still blind. Yeah. Oh yeah, we're still blind. <laughs> didn't see any of it. Just hearing armor <laughs> clanking around. Uh, so she spends the rest of the class explaining um, the concepts behind enchantment, and she gives you a very like serious and stern lecture on. Um, how important it is to use them responsibly um, and how dangerous they can be if you are placed under an enchantment. Um, she expresses that while the one she cast on Croak was uh, fairly harmless, that there are far more powerful enchantments that can be placed on you. And that uh, you should exercise extreme caution if you find yourself facing an enchantress or enchanter in combat. Uh, and then satisfied that she has successfully imparted um, at least some of her wisdom upon you, she will say, all right then, that's all for today. And um, at some point during that class, um, Killian and Yo, your your eyesight started to return to you. Everything is a little fuzzy, but um, you're starting to see okay. Yay. Yay. Crow, can you dance again? Yeah, you missed I didn't it. see it. Do it again. Yeah, do it again. Uh, maybe later. Okay. I can make him do it again if you'd like. Do yes, it, do, it, do, it. do it, do it, do it. Crook, are you alright with that? I suppose. It's the only way we'll learn. Um, Part of our education. Then make another for education. <laughs> make another wisdom <laughs> saving throw. Eleven. Uh, insufficient. Uh, so she's gonna say, "All right, then do another dance for us." Yeah. Just Gilly claps out. in the background. He like, just busts out his goofy dance. <laughs> Kelly <laughs> joins in. Yo, claps. It's completely uncoordinated. Um, she allows you to keep dancing and walks towards the door and then just as she's about to leave she says alright now jump off a cliff mm -hmm. and you're Don't free to, it, and you're free, 
you feel yourself freed from the spell as she leaves the class. <laughs> Kirk just kind of oh. stops mid dance pose and composes himself. Well, I hope you all enjoyed that. I give him a round of applause. Standing ovation. Well done, Kirk. Thanks, you. Now on to what? Lunch? Uh, no, I, lunch I, I skipped your lunch. Oh, yeah. just, just because oh, there, yeah. wasn't, there wasn't a ton to do, so I just allowed you to bypass it. Um, so it's after it's class now, classes, so yeah. um, you can head back to the dorm. I just I wanted to keep you guys moving quickly because um, there's no sense in dwelling a ton of time in the middle of stuff. Because we can move on to bigger and better things. More giant turtles? Mm, that's for second year. <laughs> we can move on to whatever you want to, man. I'm enjoying every minute of this. Mm -hmm. um, it's just that you guys get a little more freedom in the future. So I want to kind of move forward. And allow you guys to get kind of going. Because I didn't expect the the preamble of introducing you to your classes would take quite as long as it did, so I'm trying to make sure the pacing stays fresh. Gotcha. Yeah. Um. So, if anyone wants to do anything before you head back for dinner. Nah, I'm good. Do do my prayer, but we ain't gotta go through it if you don't want. Yeah, yeah don't, I was gonna say, it, we could just say croak. Uh, went inside and prayed to morning star and then to hana as well okay all right then let's go back to dinner um what was the what was it orc or half orc guard can you spell his name for me yeah i'll type it Okay, thank you. Uh, so let's roll a d100 for dinner then. Might as well. Since I have it open. Uh, whose turn is it to do that? I, I can do it too. Somebody was going to do it. I got the first got one. So. Carolyn, go. I misspelled it. Orange Jinx. There you go, 32. 32. All right. Um, today is oysters. <laughs> Ooh, oysters. Ooh. Are they That's like so on the rocks or how, how are the oysters? Cooked oysters on the rocks? Um, yeah, on the rocks. So she brings them out on a nice platter. And, Ooh, uh, oysters. And then, um, is there like, um, lime or lemon and then salt and pepper? And yeah, then of course. Sauce? She brings out sort of like all the different in, uh, oh, yeah. fixings that you'd want to, uh, Maybe have with hungry. your meal. Raw oysters are good. I'm and then are they... That. Slurps are the middle cut already or the, um do we need to like <laughs> cut them out uh, whichever you prefer I, i'm not too committed to the uh oyster rp <laughs> uh, she says enjoy dearies and throws down your platter oh, doesn't throw it down but she puts down your platter um, <laughs> she, just throws she, she, whips yeah. it, she whips it at you from across the room Spoiled I want rat. oysters. These damn kids. <laughs> I know. Every year. Oysters are good. They are. Yo, uh, it was all about that. Oh yeah. So is Gilly. They're it's like okay about it. Really? It's better Just than okay? the. Uh, it's better than the the vegetarian meal from last night. Just but okay. We prefer some more meat. Wait, raw oysters are so good. 
Mm. Kaylian feels kind of sick. The raw, the sliminess reminds her of the raw chicken she ate. Mm. Yeah. Really? She pushes it aside. <laughs> Is she just eating them without putting like salt, pepper, and hot sauce? <laughs> yes. That, that's what Croak's like doing. He's just slurping them raw plain through the visor. Really? I would, wouldn't eat them raw. Like that. I guess oysters Gilly famous. looks over at everyone and he's like, have you guys never had raw oysters before? Eh. No. I not do not really. hail from a port town, so I've uh, not had much experience with seafood. So Gilly, like, goes and then makes one with the condiments for uh, Croak and Killian and then says, try it this way. Yeah, uh, Croak tries it. Hmm. It appears that this is somewhat better. Yeah, it's an improvement on uh, what you were having. Killian just kind of sticks out her tongue and licks it. It's really slimy. Uh... Didn't you eat Professor uh, Theophilius' slime? Yeah. Guess, he's got you there. <laughs> hmm. And this is a different kind of slimy. It's like fishy slimy. Hmm. I see. So you only like slimy slimy, not fishy slimy. Yeah. Hmm, duly noted. It's more, it's more chewy than slimy. Well, Kurt's about had his fill of oysters. Kellyanne <laughs> will pass her plate over to Gilly. Gilly's gonna eat it, cause it's good. And then he's gonna be like, at least Yo understands. Yep, yeah, Yo's already done eating. Um, so as you polish off your uh, your plate, uh, Josefina will come back to grab the platter and say, "Oh, did you enjoy it? it was amazing." Uh, not wanting to offend Josefina, Kirk says. Oh, yes, ma'am. It was delicious. We enjoyed it greatly. Oh, good, 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 good. Uh, she grabs the platter and starts to collect your plates. Billy um, nods and is like, yeah, it was really good. Well, I'm glad to hear it. You all have a good night, then. You too, Miss Josephina. Good night. Croak will uh, stand up and Get out of the dining hall. Croak's visor must be absolutely disgusting. <laughs> he cleans it every morning. Oh, he's going to bed with it smelling like oysters. Yeah. <laughs> he sleep in your armor? Yeah. Oh, man. So he, he typically, he'll do like some morning stretches whenever he gets up. Sometimes I'll RP it out. Sometimes just imagine that he's doing that. Because he gets kind of stiff, armor. sleeping in armor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alright, tonight Yo scrolls a picture of the giant turtle. Because he forgot. Somehow, he was too in awe of his greatness the night before. Poor Windermere skipped dinner. She must be depressed. <laughs> we gotta interact with her more I keep wanting to but I never have like a good reason I think she wants us to I think she needs it though <laughs> um, so if no one wants to do anything else then we'll head to bed nighty night Um, alright, so I think we'll end the session here because it's been three and a half hours. Um, Thank you. 
But I thought we could probably get through another day there, so I'm glad we did. A good shit, man. Yeah. Uh, so that was the end of Thursday. So tomorrow will be Friday, which is your last day of the week. Great. Ooh, the weekend. What kind Ooh. of shit can we get into then? Um. Yeah. So you will have some free reign there, um, to potentially leave the school grounds. Go on like a Hogsmeade trip. Yeah, that's kind of the idea. Ooh. Um. Will we tomorrow. Um, yeah, so you have the way that your schedule works is that you can see that you have classes on um, all the weekdays, uh, two each weekday. Um, the only thing is, uh, yo, you actually have um, your fist, your school of the fist class is on Saturday at the crack of dawn. Oh, um, very, very early in the morning at the battlegrounds. Uh, that's the only that's the only difference in your schedules. Okay. That'll be fun. Um, so yeah, that's where we'll leave today's session. Then. Nice. Great session, everyone. Yeah. I was not expecting uh, Gilly's parents to show up. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was coming eventually, but it, it was pretty quick. It was good, though. I mean, it's it doesn't take long to get there, obviously. It's just a portal, so. Oh, yeah. It would sense. make sense, yeah, that as soon as you got the letter. But, yeah. We just didn't even think about it. Plus, it's been two weeks since we played, so. Mm -hmm. Nothing was fresh on my mind. Turtle, though. Love the turtle voice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the turtle yeah. voice was amazing. Yeah. Was it Shalavander, uh, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. I did. I did tell you I spent some time upping the production value. <laughs> Dude, props. It's great. Yeah, you did great. I got all my uh, my hotkeys and stuff set up now, so yeah, I should have some some interesting things in the future that I can toy around with. Awesome. Looking forward to it. Um, all right, uh, so I'm just gonna end the stream, but I can stick around to talk to you guys a little bit. Oh, sure. Um, but yeah, that was that was a fun session. Hell yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks for playing, and uh, thanks for anyone who was watching. Um, because that was a lot of fun. Uh, so I guess Twitch stream, have a good night. I love.